Hi everyone and welcome to Chronic Corner. Today's episode is all about the diagnosis, treatment, and causes of POTS. So first, the diagnosis. The only real way to diagnose POTS is by taking something called a tilt table test. Now to do this, doctors strap you to a mechanical table and while monitoring your heart rate and blood pressure amongst other things, tilt you to a minimum of 60 degrees. Now, while doing this, they watch your heart rate and blood pressure and see how much they change. And if they meet a certain specification, then they can diagnose you with POTS. Again, it depends on the person and the severity of your symptoms. I think I lasted about nine minutes um, before I started to pass out on my tilt table and they caught me right before and diagnosed me right then and there because it was clear, but it depends on the person. So the treatments of POTS, like I said, there's no magic cure, no magic pill, at least that I've found. Um, I don't think anyone in the Dinette community has really found, but a lot of doctors recommend the same things to all POTS patients. And the first two that are the most important is to increase your fluid intake and your salt intake. So when I was younger and I first got diagnosed, I was drinking every electrolyte and sports drink I could get my hands on, whether it was Gatorade, Powerade, now they have Smart Water, um, all these drinks that have electrolytes and high sodium in them to replenish athletes were really good for me. Now, of course, I can't stand the taste of them because I drank so many when I was younger and I just, well, they're so sugary and sweet now, I can't stand them. But there was that and then the salt intake. And when I was first diagnosed, the only thing we could get our hands on salt-wise was salt tablets, which were disgusting. They were these little tabs of like one inch round, packed salt, no coating whatsoever. And I'd have to take them in the morning before going to school. And of course, in the morning, I'm super nauseous at that time. And the last thing I want to do is put this tablet of just pure salt in my mouth. And oh, it did not agree with me at all. It was horrible. Thankfully, now I found capsules that are filled with salt and electrolytes that help so much better. You don't have to taste anything. So that really helped. The other thing a lot of doctors like to recommend is exercise, which is kind of a hot button issue with people with POTS because, and just out of know me in general really, because when you don't feel good, you're in pain, you're tired, you can't stand for more than a few minutes, the last thing on your mind is exercise. But of course they tell you you need to strengthen your muscles and everything to help yourself feel better. So it's kind of a give and take, you know, if exercise is so difficult but it's gonna make you feel better, it's not easy and it's hard I think for doctors sometimes to understand that when they recommend it. The other thing is medicine. A lot of POTS patients have tried different drugs, whether they're beta blockers or whatever, and it's different for every person. I mean, I have yet to find any medicine that really helps. I've tried a bunch. I felt like a guinea pig, which is usually what you have to do, and weigh the pros and the cons with the side effects versus does it work, doesn't it work? So it's really difficult. The other thing is um, compression tights. I've worn them multiple times, especially if I know I'm gonna be standing for a length of time. And when I was sicker, I wore them constantly, especially at school because I needed to. Of course, that's the last thing you wanna be wearing when you're a 12 year old is compression tights because they look hideous usually. But now I just wear them under my jeans and they do help, especially on plane rides and places that I'm gonna be doing a lot of sitting or standing. So there's that, and then a lot of people do diet and food eliminations. Um, you know, nowadays, gluten and dairy are such popular issues, and a lot of dysautonomia patients have done elimination diets and found that those have been contributing to their symptoms. Now, none of this is a cure, but things that can help them manage their symptoms better has really made a big difference. And these are just a few um, treatments that have helped people, you know, each person's different. Some have tried physical therapy and that's helped. Some have tried traditional medicine. Some have tried natural medicine. You know, it just varies person to person. Okay. So the other thing is the causes of POTS. 
Now, a lot of this is still unknown. Doctors have been doing research for years and there are so many other illnesses that doctors think can contribute to POTS. There's not really one that stands out that a bunch of people have experienced. The most common are diabetes, cardiac related health issues, neuropathy, a traumatic event, mono, MS, Lyme disease, and possibly autoimmune diseases. So there isn't really one clear answer. Many people have experienced multiple of these, so it really depends on the person. For me, I know there's a lot of people in my family that have had autonomic nervous system health issues and different forms of dysautonomia. I really don't know what caused mine, um, and no one really knows what caused my other family. They have a lot of health issues, so it could be that they had one and then developed POTS or other dysautonomic health issues, but it's not really clear for me either. But hopefully this helped answer some questions that you had about POTS. And for more information, visit Dinet.org. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.